Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. Uh, over the past couple months, I've been talking about uh, the challenges as we look at reading online um, and thinking more about the ways in which we could and we should be reading online. Uh, I think I've read a lot online and I've also uh, talked to a lot of colleagues and we talk about how, you know, reading online isn't really reading or, um, you know, we have, uh, we, I talk to students and they have, they struggle reading online. They'd rather print stuff out and mark it up and highlight it and annotate it. Um, and in my classes, I try to nudge their thinking about this. Um, but I've been thinking about how we could and should read online and have more posts coming and more thinking about that. But at the same time, I've been doing a lot of work and play and experimenting with indie web work and indie web philosophies in my websites. Um, and I've documented some of that and I have more to come. Um, and then at the same time, I've been thinking, and a lot of this is motivated by my work in open scholarship, uh, but then also the, the interactions with the indie web movement, I've been thinking about the ways in which I write. And I've, and I've talked a lot about this in other videos, so you can go look at those videos. Um, but something happened um, that, for me, really means a lot. And so I want to walk you through what happens, uh, what happened, um, and, and let you know why I'm excited, um, and I think you should be too. Um, so I'm still, this is still a, a half-baked idea, but I think something big happened, and I want to document that. So I'm going to switch over my screen. So this week I put out this post, and uh, this was motivated by um, some of my recent thinking and work in folding in indie web into my work and my domains and my spaces. But then also, uh, much of my work, I guide students and colleagues in having a domain of their own. And so Alan Levine posted, um, you know, a series of interview questions asking us to, you know, those of us that are out there actively maintaining and building these domains. Um, you know, he posted a bunch of questions um, as a way for us to like interview our domains and have us think more deeply. Um, but then also, and this is my my commentary about this, um, had us basically talk about the thinking behind the scenes as to why we pick domain names and what are the processes and then how do we view these domains interacting. Um, I think this is brilliant. Um, I think it's brilliant because um, it's something that I've been trying to push others to do, um, to sit down and basically document how they, the processes that we use and the ways in which we work. But um, more to the point of this video, uh, this post that I put together, I basically answer all of Alan's questions and I go into very, uh, into great detail. I probably go into more detail than I should have. Um, but to me, this is very important. I want to make it, make my thinking transparent. Um, and I've talked about this in other posts. Um, I want to see a way that I can write. Um, you know, I can write and think and I can work and think and write out in the open I can use Google Docs to start these drafts but then also I can go send these drafts out to you know they can turn into something else they can turn into a blog post they can turn into a publication a traditional publication like an article or a book chapter or a book um, or they can go off and live and be other things um, they might be a video like this um, but basically these ideas, I want to show these ideas in this trail of breadcrumbs. Um, and, and that's why I've been building up other websites in other areas. And I have other videos about that. But here's the interesting thing. So for me, I, I put this post out there and I basically shared it out as a way to document my thinking. Um, and what I like to see is a future where we can write and share our stuff online and then we can get critical feedback or we can get commentary on our work and we can document and archive that commentary and that feedback along with our work so that if someone comes and reads this post now or someone reads this in five years or if I go back you know five years from now and I change my thinking and I change my domains I can come back to this post and I can reflect on what I wrote but then I can reflect on the feedback that I got um, and then I can, you know, adjust my new content based upon this feedback. Um, 
Why this is also very important is I wear another hat as an academic, as a scholar, as a researcher, and I want to be able to get data, um, take that data and turn that data into, you know, analyze that data, turn it into a publication, a research article, a chat, a book chapter, and all of the other stuff I talked about. So for me, it's very much the same thing. If I'm reading online and I get an idea or a bookmark and something that makes me think, and I turn it into a blog post or an article or a publication, a traditional publication, it's pretty much the same thing for me as data I get from classroom observations or giving an instrument and having people take it and taking that data and analyzing. It's all the same thing for me. Um, and so I don't see a reason why I cannot share content online, get feedback and commentary, find a vehicle to make that commentary and feedback transparent and open and and uh, overt, you know, to other people, obvious to other people, so that they can see it and act upon it. So I have this long post, um, and I've, you know, I, as I said, I go into a little bit too much detail. So the cool thing here is that, um, that's the Allen piece, um, not soon after I received a post, um, a, a read post, um, from Chris Aldrich, uh, one of the, one of my mentors in the indie web community among many. Um, and so what was really intriguing to me is I, I start scrolling through and typically what you'll see is you'll see a read post, um, where someone else will, will basically pick up your post and they will do what I've done in the past, which is, you know, pull out a couple quotes and give some commentary to the post. And so that's interesting to me, but then what I saw blew my mind, and this is why I'm excited, um, and this is going to impact a lot of my work. So I'm scrolling through, and, and I see that Chris basically has, you know, some commentary, but then what I notice is that he has uh, annotations. He has annotations using hypothesis from my post. So he'll have annotations, and then within the annotations, he'll have his commentary embedded in there, okay? And then he has a guide to the highlight colors, basically talking about um, as he's reading through and marking, uh, marking this up and giving feedback, sort of like what did he mark up and annotate and, and his thinking over time, okay? And so what he did was he basically used hypothesis um, and I've talked a lot about hypothesis in the past. I have a lot of videos. I use hypothesis in my classes. Um, but let's just be honest here. If you look at my markups and my annotations, I don't use hypothesis a lot. Okay. So I am a total hypocrite in my use of hypothesis. And the reason why I don't use it a lot in my workflow, in my work process is that it, for the most part, doesn't work in my processes. Um, I use other tools. I use other tools to bookmark, and then now I'm using, you know, I'm being more thoughtful in the ways that I read. But I think that's going to change, and I think it's going to change for the better. So if I go into my post here, what I can do is I can notice um, that Chris has gone through, and in my post, he has basically marked up my post, so he would highlight a section and then leave a note. Okay, so I can do the same thing here. I can highlight this, and I can annotate it and leave a note of my own. But Chris went through and marked up and annotated my piece and left notes throughout. Um, and this, you know, this is very powerful. This is also not new. Those of you that use Hypothesis um, know that this is something that you can do all the time. Okay, so this is why I love Hypothesis. But my challenge is, for me, it doesn't close the circle. So I can go in and I can find a, a post, a great post, you know, that Chris would write, and I can mark it up and annotate it. But the problem is that those annotations and those markups live on this document here, okay? And that's great. That's very powerful. I see the value in that because then other people can come through and they can read it and mark it up. But what I love about what Chris has done is now using his his other website and using a lot of the indie web philosophies and tools what he's done is he's pulled all of these annotations together and put together a blog post so the future that i see is i can put together a blog post okay and chris can sit down or someone can sit down and they can mark it up and they can annotate it and and sort of give commentary right in it 
but basically read through and highlight things and say, I like this, I like that, I have questions about this, I have concerns about this part. So they can mark it up and annotate it and, and give it a, a thorough, critical read and leave feedback right on the blog post, okay? So we can have commentary about the text baked into the text, which is what I love about Hypothesis, but then you can close the loop. So what Chris has done here is he can go in and take all of those annotations. So he's got 14 odd annotations in here. He can take those and then normally what we would do is, normally what I would do is in my, in my breadcrumb site, I would create a new post and I'd have a bookmark or a read where it basically indicates something that I'm giving commentary to. So what I can do is I can start up a new post and sort of like bookmark or share the link for it. Who wrote it? But then I can embed in my highlights. Okay, I can embed in my content from Hypothesis, all these, all of these annotations, and I can fold in some commentary. You know, I can fold in a couple sentences here and there to give some nuance or commentary, some of my perspective. Um, and then the thing that, uh, to really close the loop, the thing that really looks awesome to me, um, is all of this now lives, um, it should live, I have to fix my, my uh, commentary, but it will live <laughs> once I fix this down here. So someone will read this and they'll say, oh, okay, that's interesting. They might click over to Hypothesis, but once I fix the behind the scenes on this post, what they'll be able to do is they will see a link over to this post from Chris. So they will be able to dr uh, dig in deeper, drill down, and look at Chris's feedback and opinion and commentary on what I wrote. Okay, so for me, this is adding that layer of annotation that Hypothesis is, is trying to build up. But it's also pulling it back to individuals' identities. Um, and to me, that's really, really powerful. So this has me very excited. Um, and, and one of the other cool things is that Chris basically has this whole post that he's talking about um, what he did and how he did it. Um, so now my job is I'm going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to read this post from Chris. Um, I'm going to mark it up using Hypothesis, and I'm going to make my own read post on my site um, giving feedback to what Chris wrote. Okay, so once again, here we have my post. Okay, and then Chris went through with the annotations and hypothesis, marked it up. He has his own post where he pulls these threads together. Then he sat down and, um, and, and what I might do is give feedback to this feedback that Chris gave me. Once again, I'll use hypothesis and I'll use my breadcrumb site, but then also I can sit down and I can drill down and think about my thinking or think about my writing and my process and give feedback to Chris on this post that he shared, okay? So I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot of thinking to do because I want to make sure that this works into my process. Um, but I think this is big. I think this is really big. Um, I think there's a lot of loose wires. I think there's a lot of rough edges here. There are people that are far smarter than I am about this, but um, I think we're onto something. Um, and, and so what I'll do is I'll continue to play with it, work it into my, pro my process, um, and then I'll have a, a blog post later all about it. Um, so with that being said, I'm excited. Um, hopefully this means something to you. If you're somebody that plays in indie web or you think about domains or you use hypothesis, um, or you are just a, a digitally agile educator or somebody that plays in these spaces, um, hopefully you can see the value in this, um, and I think I'm going to, I'm hoping that I'm going to come back to this video um, and these blog posts that I'll write over the next week or two. I'm hoping that I come back to these in a couple months or a year and say, yeah, that was a turning point. Um, so that's my hope. Um, let's be positive on a Friday. So thanks once again. Hopefully this video is of value to you. Uh, give me some comments down below. Um, and hopefully, uh, once again, you have a great uh, week. Thanks a ton.